Hello my soccer universe and welcome to a little preview of the UEFA Conference League final on this upcoming Wednesday. Conference League final that pairs Olympiacos in the first ever European final against Fiorentina. A team that has had a few European finals but as of now has only won a single one of these. So that's actually quite an interesting one. Uh, from a UEFA perspective, since the Conference League has been uh, competition has been made for smaller teams, Having Olympiacos, only the second ever Greek team in there, is probably a big success. However, as we will see, Olympiacos kind of have a home field advantage as the final is played just up the road from their home ground in Piraeus. Um, it might also cause some tension within Greece as well, because as we know, the top four teams in Greece, that's being Olympiacos, Aik, Panathinaikos and Pauk, current champions do not really like each other and having Olympiacos potentially win on Ajax home ground not sure how well this will go down so that to me is probably the biggest storyline of the entire final may it be a great final may it be not I think uh, the way that uh, what this will have to do with the fans this is where I am looking with a little bit concern towards this one however Let's get started with uh, the little preview uh, that I have, have made um, the final, as I said, Olympiacos against Fiorentina. Uh, let's talk first about jerseys. I was a little bit surprised. I mean, it was, of course, Olympiacos will be playing in their red jerseys. I was surprised that Fiorentina will play with their white away jerseys. Honestly, if you were to ask me, I think an all purple kit would have been already fine. Fiorentina have already a great third jersey that I actually initially thought they will play in that would probably provide a little bit uh, more contrast the white one, I guess, but given there's also a serious amount of white on the Olympiacos jersey, I was a little bit surprised to say the least, but it's a beautiful jersey, so I think it will overall be all right. Of course, at the Fiorentina store, you can already buy it with the customization for that final as well. Um, I already said the final will be played in Athens and what can I tell you about Athens uh, that you don't already know, cradle of uh, modern civilization, you know, the cradle of democracy. Uh, when I looked uh, for pictures for this final and that you see right, right now, of course, if you put in Athens in Google Images, you get pictures of the Acropolis, the Acropolis, the Acropolis. Uh, however, been, have, having been in Athens 30 years ago, uh, I can tell there's a whole lot more to Athens and just the Acropolis. Of course, the Acropolis is amazing and is a must see, but there's also uh, Old Greece, the Agora there. There's also a little bit around the area, uh, you know, the, the Parliament. And we have also the, the first modern Olympic Stadium, which I think is quite an interesting structure. There are quite a few nice neighborhoods in there as well. So there's definitely a whole lot more to Athens than just the Acropolis. And yes, when I was there, the Acropolis Museum didn't yet exist, but I have, have to say I was quite amazed by uh, the entire city it had a certain feel to it um, you know definitely crossroads between east and west but also you know you have with the added bonus of having a lot of antiquity there as well the stadium is Greece's third largest, the largest, of course, being the Olympic Stadium, uh, which would be probably too large for this final. Although I think Olympi with Olympiacos in there, they may, may be able to sell this out. It's also only the third largest because Olympiacos' own ground, not too far away, is just a tad bigger. The stadium holds around 31, 32,000 for this final, which makes, I think, the largest ground that we had so far for Europa Conference League final. Definitely bigger than Tirana, definitely bigger than the one we had in Prague last year. And given that that there is a home team and that Fiorentina also bring quite some fans. I think this sounds about appropriate as well. The state stadium itself um, has been hosting now also the Greek national team for a while. It's Greece's most modern stadium. I think it's a quite nice looking stadium in a, a decent neighborhood uh, as, as well. So I think it's a really, really good choice overall. Um, the final will be refereed by Portuguese referee uh, Artur Soares Dias, who has been Portugal's best referee for quite a while. So I think he's an apt appointment. I don't really have any um, feeling uh, that would be negative. I always thought he's a very capable referee. 
Let's look at the pathways to the final and you will see there's quite some commonalities between those two. Let's start with Olympiakos with this long run. They started in the third qualifying round for the Europa League already where they first ousted Genk, uh, one nil at home and one one in the way. And then uh, in the playoffs they had to play against Cucharicki, winning this very convincingly 6-1 on aggregate. I mean, beating Genk was an upset. Chucharicki is something that you would expect. However, they were more or less outclassed in the Europa League group stage. Freiburg was no match, uh, losing 3 to him, 5 0 away. Uh, you played another Serbian team, Bacca Topola, where you actually got the win, and this actually led you to then move on in, in, into the Conference League. And yes, against West Ham, um, it was a little bit, uh, you held your own, you won 2 1 at home. However, you lost 1-0 uh, away, but by the end it needed Olympiakos to get the results against Bacca Topola to secure the third spot because Freiburg and West Ham were running away with the group. Then, in the playoff, you played uh, Hungarian champions Ferenc Varos, where you won twice 1-0. So I think that, that was already a pretty good result. And then the big one. I, uh, everything from here is absolute miracle territory. Ter it was an absolute amazing run that Olympiakos did. You lost at home to Maccabi Tel Aviv, a team that has no home ground because of uh, the political situation uh, in Israel. You lost 4-1 at home, convincingly so. <laughs> However, you got yourself back into the game and managed to win 6-1 away from home in Budapest. That's maybe the one thing, if this would have been played uh, in Tel Aviv, it might have been a diff different story, but still. A rather remarkable comeback, losing three goals at home and still moving on with a 6-1 away win. This was part of a huge day for Greek soccer, uh, where also Pauk then moved on. However, Pauk did not make two to the final. Then you play against Fenerbahce. So uh, Turkish-Greek uh, relations are always a little bit iffy. So two really big teams from either country. You had a 3-0 lead at home with El Kabe being, of course, uh, the big star there. Uh, Fenerbahce put two uh, back in, in, in the second half, then you lose one nil away from home, however, on penalties. Um, so luck is your young goal goal who became the hero. And you move on to the semifinals where you are ranked outsiders against Aston Villa. However, Aston Villa pressured high and were caught on the Kankakan track. And again, it was um, El Kabi who was the hero, I think, scoring a hat trick at Villa and then also the two goals to move them on into this final. Definitely a miracle run, especially the last three results. Maybe Fenerbahce not as much, but what did the comeback against Maccabi tell here with? And then the absolute dominance over Aston Villa, immediately attired Aston Villa side, shows how good this team actually is. Fiorentina, being more seeded but already in the Conference League, had a much shorter run. They played in the UA uh, qualifying playoffs against Rapid Vienna who gave them their only loss 1-0 away from home and it took them a very contentious penalty laid on for uh, Fiorentina to move on over the Austrian team. And then look at the group stage. They played Genk, Ferenc Vars and Cucharicki. Three teams that uh, we had Olympiakos also playing against Genk, similar to Olympiakos, 2-2 away from 2-1 at home. And Fiorentina, you see score Generally, a whole lot of goals. This is their uh, forte. Although I think the goal scoring over is letting them down, curiously enough. So they also narrow win over Genk. Two draws against Ferencvaros. Their Olympiakos was better. Against Chujarichki, though, it's a 7 0 on aggregate, showing there's a clear uh, gulf in class. However, you know, Olympiakos also had an over 6 1 aggregate result. Then, winning that group uh, they could uh, go over the playoffs so they went there directly also against an easy Israeli team with a mad 4-3 away away win in Budapest again uh, where I think they had to come down uh, come back from 3-2 down as well and then playing out a 1-1 at home against Victoria Pilsen a nil nil draw Victoria Pilsen keeping really 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 tight uh, however they missed so many chances in the home leg this never should have gone to overtime but it's overtime it went then another crazy game against Club Bruges a Club Bruges team that played for a long time with a man less I think even took twice the lead however a late come comeback see Fiorentina win that game as well and then away from home uh, Club Rouge quickly get an equalizer however then Fiorentina were the better team in the end get the equalizer move on to the final but it was maybe not as convincing of a run overall and definitely not a miracle run as Olympiacos uh, had so far.
uh, if we compare the two teams on a general level, it's really hard, 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 hard to compare because Olympiakos are a giant in the Greek game. 47 championships. And yes, if you ask uh, my uh, Greeks, that are maybe not sympathetic to Olymp Olympiakos, they say, well, uh, probably at least half of them were, let's say, iffy. They also have a ton of cup wins. Fiorentina are not a giant, I mean, are a very well established uh, Italian team with only two cup, uh, two championships and six cup wins. I would not call them a giant of the Italian game, but a mainstay. They're part of the Seven Sisters. They also have one cup winner's cup. That was in the early, earlier 60s. They, won a, they lost the European Cup final uh, to Real Madrid. I think it was only Real Madrid's second ever triumph. So this must have been then uh, 56 or 57. 57 it was. Uh, and they also lost the Conference League final last year. So it's the time for redemption. Uh, the two teams have never met. However, we see already that the lower statistics, well, title-wise, Olympiakos are a much bigger team. Much bigger team. Uh, when I look at market value, Fiorentina is more than twice as well valuable. It has also a slightly younger squad, has also about the same as in, 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 in internationals. But Fiorentina coming from a big league as compared to Olympiacos have to be, of course, considered the favorites. How do I see this game going? It's really, really hard to call. Uh, if we, I could see well, I definitely see Fiorentina being the more proactive team. The team that will attack, again, will finishing let them down as it frequently has. I think the uh, quarterfinals and semifinals should never have been as close as they have been. Uh, on the other side, if Fiorentina don't score and are vulnerable to count contract, and you know, they are just a mid-table team in Serie A, although uh, in Serie A at the moment this means most likely that they, that they will go again in the Conference League, which is about Fiorentina's size, although I think they would have potential for a whole lot more. Uh, but they are sometimes vulnerable to counter again. This is where Olympiacos can strike. Also with coach Mendy Libar, they have a really wily coach that just won the Europa League last season with Sevilla. And I could see a very similar game there that Fiorentina will come out, maybe even take technical Olympiacos can hit back. So it's very much in balance. Yes, Fiorentina are overall the better team. They have to be considered the favorites. My model says they have 57% favorite uh, over Olympiacos. However, adding that there might be a little bit home field advantage there. It is very, very open, I would say, overall. Uh, this Olympiacos team has been a giant killer. In, do they have one more miracle run or is the occasion get 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 them? In any case, I'm really looking forward to this one. Uh, almost more than to the Champions League final, because you have the outsider factor for both of these teams in, in a way. I mean, Fiorentina lifting a Euro European trophy, it's not something you see every day. A Greek team never has won a European trophy. The question is, of course, would this be, I mean, if they win it, this would be the best Greek performance ever. I mean, we had Panathinaikos losing a Euro, uh, um, European Cup final in 71 to Ajax at Wembley and also reaching a Champions League semi-final in 96, which I think are really, really, really good performances as well. Uh, so, you know, we can again start a Greek R argument there, but both teams have a little bit the outsider status, very fitting to the Conference League. I think both teams are very good um, exponents for this comp comp competition will be an interesting final for sure please let me know who you think will win this final who do you support obviously i'm supporting fiorentina because of my soft spot for italy but you know also i'm have been wearing fiorentina all the time because i have a whole lot more fiorentina shirts three as compared to olympiaco shirts where you know it was an odyssey to just get this single one up there any case Share your thoughts below, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye!